Christmas job family farm. Um, today RJ is out um, with his team room and partner. I'm on lamb watch. We have one who's got a little um, mucus, so pretty soon, any day now. Um, we are waiting on the adapter kit to fix the cable, which that's a whole other issue I'm having right now. Um, it's been put off. It was supposed to be delivered Thursday. I ordered it Monday. It's supposed to be delivered Thursday. Then it was pushed to Friday, and now it says Tuesday. I, I have no idea. So anyway, I am trying to occupy my time. I'm supposed to make some other videos for class. I really don't want to uh, because of my throat. They need to be able to hear what I'm saying, and they need to make sure that it's perfectly clear. So you guys get me instead with the froggy voice. All right, so those that have followed us for any length of time know that my grandmother passed away. And as we clean through some of her stuff, we find projects that she really wanted to do. One such project is this. And I don't know if you can see it very well, but it was a rug. And she bought everything from the warp to the weft to the shuttles. Okay. So, I own a floor and loom. Um, me and a girlfriend actually are partners on the floor loom. And I have a Harrison design for treadle floor loom that I plan to weave this rug on. Now, this is a learning experience for me. I'm going to say that right up front. I normally, and you'll understand the biggest difference here. This is the shuttle that I am used to weaving on, okay? This bobbin holds quite a bit, and my weft is about the same size as this, if not a worsted yarn. It's probably the biggest I've ever used. Um, maybe an art yarn. Sometimes I get a little thick with those but this is what I'm used to you can see from this that this is what I'm getting ready to use um I don't know if my chain tension is going to be different I don't know if worth per inch is going to be different I'm about to figure it out okay so I'm going to get into the math today just because it's a part that I hate and then um yeah once I get it figured out and figure out if I have enough stuff, I will take you along for the journey as we start. Um, first, I'm going to say anything that I've ever done, I refreshed. I mean, I learned as a kid, but learning to weave, and it's by Deborah Chandler, and I use her. This book was printed like in the 90s. I'm not sure if it's still available or not, but this is the one that I personally bought as an adult um, when I started learning to weave again um, my grandmother however used a step-by-step -step weaving by Neil and I know I'm gonna butcher this the name Z-N-A-M-I-E-R-O-W-S-K-I Z -N -A -M -I -E -R -O -W -S -K -I. so and I think it's Nell not even Neil it's N-E-L-L -L. so I don't know this is the book that she used I haven't really gone through it. I just kept it because it was my granny's and it, I just put it with mine. Um, everything that I know about calculations comes from Deborah's book. Okay. Um, and it's always worked for me. I don't know if because I've never woven warp and weft not being the same size. So I, I don't know. We will see how it goes. For starters, let's start with warp weft. The easiest way to remember it. The warp goes up and down, and it's normally thinner or the same size. The weft goes left. That's how we teach the little kids. Um, weft goes right and left, and it's what you're actually weaving with. The warp is stationary and goes up and down on your um, loom. So, according to Grandma's design, she wants it 24 inches by 34 and she has it drawn out she wants it um 24 inches on or 20 inches on the weft and 34 inches on the warp and yes it would make a difference if she changed that um it takes a, a different math um you have to calculate it separately is what i'm saying so you have to decide which way you're really going um and she's already done that so <clears throat> she wants it 20 inches wide. How many warps is that going to take? Well, first we have to figure out how many warps are in an inch. We have 
I use these. I use them for knitting crochet and my hand spun yarns. And for knitting, they're called wraps per an inch. When I use them for the loom, it's called warps per inch. Just saying. I use the same one. You literally, to figure it out, wrap it around all nice and neat, scrunch it down, and how many ever wraps you can get in one inch laid flat across there is going to be your warps per inch, or if you're doing yarn, it's wraps per inch, okay? So, when I did that, I'm not going to sit here and make you do that, um, make you watch me. I figured out that this, there's 18 of these in one inch, okay? So, the 20 inches by the 18 means I need 360 warps. Now, I did a little research because I've never done a rug before. And the one consistently different thing is, is they said to warp the two end shafts twice, double warp them for stability of the rug um, because the edges kind of will move or whatever and more like a salvage. So I am going to double warp those two, which means I need two more warps, giving me 362 warps. Now, I know how many threads I need. How many, how long do they have to be? That's a whole other formula. All right, so I want it 34 inches long. You automatically add on three inches for the header and three inches for the footer. Okay, it's just a given. That's just the way it is, and you'll weave. Um, I'm actually going to use this to weave my header and my footer. Although, I think now that I've done the math, I have enough of this, I might make it gold. Just saying. Um... So you put three inches on that and three inches, three inches top, three inches at the bottom, and you've got 34 inches plus those six. Well, that's great, but that's not all you need. There is in weaving, there's shrinkage, and there is draw up. The best way, I'm not going to get into breaking it down, just at 15%. Okay, so when you get your 34 inches plus your header and your footer, and headers and footers can be different. I use three inches. That's just the way it is. Um, that's just what I do. So, if you want a different header or footer, it, it's up to you. Um, just remember that that's where you're going to tie off and you have to have room to make a knot. And if you're going to leave fringe, you know, that's, that's one of the things that you've got to take into account. So, I personally use three inches. Then, 15% of that 36 or 34 plus the six, which brings it to 42. There's another six inches that I'm going to add on there for my 15% drop. Okay, that brings my total to 46 inches. So, I now know I need 362 warps at 46 inches long. Now, warp comes in yards. This is 800 yards. Alright? I have three and only two are gold. All right, so I have 16 yards of this. And if you put that for per in inches, that's 57,600 inches. Now, do I have enough? According to my 46 inches times my 362 warps, I need 16,652 inches. I got that easy, easy. Um... 800 yards measures about 28,800 inches, just saying. Um, now, I know I have enough for the warp, and I will be using a, a warping loom to, or peg loom, or peg board. There, there's a lot of names for them, but I'm going to warp it on a board, okay? I don't have the big fancy stand up, put all of my rollers. Um, they have these stands that you put these on and then warp through. I don't have those, so I do it all by hand. Um, now we have to figure out the weft. I have enough warp. I know that I'm going to have to measure these out to be 46 inches long, and I know I need 362 of them. When I go to the other room and get my board and I, my warping board, I will know exactly what I'm doing, and I'll calculate those out. Now, the wefts. This is where I always have issues, and it's just me. I always doubt my math. So, Again, you're going to do the same thing. This is our weft, and there's 75 inches or 75 yards per a bundle like this. Um, they come with these right here. Um, normally, when they come, they're all nice and neat, and you can run your hands through these. 
these have been stored for quite a while and oops I'm probably out of frame uh, these have been stored quite a while so you can't really get your hand through there but it will be fine um, I will hand do them instead of putting in the shuttle in there like that anyway so I want it to be 34 inches long so once again I've taken this and I found out how many of these strands will make an inch by wrapping it around and this one I'm actually going to show you because it just and don't pull it real tight okay but I've started here all right there it is and as you can see there's four wraps per inch so my rug when it does this it's going to be one inch and that's how many it's going to be how many rows are going to be back and forth is four now each row is going to be 20 inches long all right now 20 inches times the 34 inches or boy sorry the 20 inches across times the four it takes it takes 80 inches to make one inch of that rug okay now this will again number one it depends on the weight that's on your beater bar um, different things I'm a pretty loose weaver uh, if I get tight it's because I'm stressed and I'm mad and I'm really beating on it but um, I try to be I want it fluffy so anyway it's gonna take me 80 inches and if I put that in yards each of these is 75 yards which the 75 yards gives me I had it written down and I don't know where it's at um, but I've got plenty uh, 34 inches times the 80 inches it takes to do an inch gives me 136 passes and then it comes up to 2720 inches of weft that I need so now there's a couple of color changes in there you do have to add on a percentage but I've got like how much do I have here 1,000 no 13,500 yards and I think I only need less than 3,000 so I doubt my math on the wealth weft I always do I, I don't know why I just never and I end up with extra now knowing my grandmother the way I do the reason that there's two of these and extra of these is she probably was going to do her salvage header and put her with this and she was going to make two rugs my grandmother used to whenever she made something she made herself one and she made a second one and then sold the second one to pay for hers so that she got the item for free that was her thing that's how she worked it it's pretty good to go by um there, this is going to be trial and error. I don't know if I can do this. I've never done a rug before. So the math is the complicated part. As you can tell, it's not a science. Um, it, each person has their own percentage of, and, and if I was a great weaver, I would know exactly how much my percentage of drop is. 15% is just a good standard. Am I gonna have that much? Maybe, maybe not. It, it, I could have 10%. It, it just depends on my weaving style as it will yours. So, um, just to make sure I've got enough stuff, I know I've got it. Um, the loom that I'm going to use is a HD, which stands for Harrison Designs. It's out of Indiana, I believe. Harrison, Indiana, or Harry? Yeah, Harrison, I think, Indiana. And um, it's a four treadle floor loom. I've never wove anything on it, um, but like scarves, placemats. I've played with the kids on it and learned different designs. Um, that's really, I haven't done anything specific. This will be my first don't touch my loom until I'm done specific thing. Now, knowing myself the way I do 136 passes is all it's gonna take to go and do it. I should be able to knock this out if, I, if my calculations are right and I've done everything right, minus warping the loom. Once I get it warped, um, it takes me longer to warp it, but once I get it warped, um, I can 
normally knock 136 pass out no problem um, it, it really shouldn't take me that long so I'm hoping that warping the loom to getting this done is less than a week but here's the deal why am I doing this now in the middle of lambing season because it's spring I don't have a heated studio our um, we have an extra bedroom that was my daughter's bedroom and we don't heat it in the winter so it's cold in there spring allows the sunlight to come through that window and it shines right on the loom I'm nice and toasty warm so I get excited about weeding right at spring if lambing doesn't get in the way I'll get it done that week if not well it is what it is but come along for the ride see um, I'll create a playlist for this so that you don't have to sort through everything else and we'll see how this goes in the meantime hang in there and hopefully we'll have some lambs to birth before too long and not without the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Bye, guys.